All right, Ian. Ian, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Ohio. And tell me about your family. You had both your parents growing up? Uh, mom and stepdad. And how, how would you describe your childhood? It was good. No abuse, nothing like that? Nothing. It was happy. That's great. What kind of kid were you in high school? Uh, started off as an athlete, then kind of slacked off. Then went to vocational and got trades. What kind of jobs did you have? All kinds, mainly construction. You've been married? You have kids? Nope. Mm -hmm. At one point you got convicted of uh, a sex offense? Yep. Tell me about that. Attempted lewd lascivious battery. I got caught in a sting operation. And pretty much couldn't afford a lawyer. So I got sent to prison for three years. And now you're branded a sex offender for the rest of your life? Yep. You have to register, what, every year? Uh, six months. Every six months. And has that, does that affect your job opportunities or? Oh, yeah. How, how, does, how does it affect your life? Well, I'm stuck living here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can only go so many places. Uh, I got to stay in the county. I have a curfew. And this is going to go on for over three years. So it was just one offense that you got convicted of? Yep. How, how old was the was the girl? They said between 14 and 16. Hey, tell me about what happened. Uh, go online for the hookup site. And I went to a bunch of them. One responded back, talked to her. And then finally she said she was 14. And I said, you're just a kid. So why are you on here? But then the next night I went on all the same sites. Got responded again. It was the same one. Then I ended up going to meet her. Stopped at the gas station. Got all these weird texts saying she's a virgin. What are you going to teach me? And blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, it's probably a bad idea. But a cop pulled up the gas station. And he recognized me and so that looked like I'm not from around there. So I didn't go to the sting house, but I was close enough. So they convicted me with uh, travel to me the minor. So you never actually touched anyone? No. You just looked like you would, you attempted to, or you, you tried to meet one? Yeah. What is, what is that lesson? What, what lesson have you learned from this? Uh, don't do a bunch <laughs> of drugs. <laughs> Were you doing drugs? Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would kind of set the, it changes your uh, ability to. Your perspective. <laughs> choose right and wrong. Yeah. And how has this affected your, your family? Your relationship with your family? My relationship, fine. Yeah. They know who I am. But I can't see them because I can't leave the county. They can't come down here because of COVID. I couldn't see them for three years because I was in prison. So kind of lost some connection, but still talk to them all the time. Yeah. And do you have friends? Yeah. Mainly family, brothers, yeah. people I work with, guys around here. What, what, what kind of emotions do you, do you deal with over this? I mean, is it anger? Is there depression? Is there anxiety? Uh, I was going to name those three. <laughs> Anxiety being the biggest. Yeah. What is the anxiety over? What are you worried about? Uh, this box I have on my ankle. Um, like last night, I have to carry this thing around. And it went off last night telling me to go home when I was at home. Mm. And then it never cleared, so they called me. Where are you at? I'm at home. My probation officer called me this morning. She said, what are you doing? I was like, I promise you I was at home. She said, well, it doesn't say you were. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I was at home. Because this was after curfew. What is your curfew time? Uh, 10 o'clock. You, you gotta be home by 10. Yeah. Unless I'm at work. 
And what are you working as? What are you doing for work now? I'm cooking. It's about the only jobs we can get. Yeah. Can't work on people's houses because there might be kids around. I'm not supposed to be around minors, period, while I'm on probation. Yeah. And you're in this mobile home park where it's nothing but sex offenders? Correct. So you guys have to, you know, you're in a situation where you're staying away from kids? Because we are very limited to where we can live. Right. And when you give your ID for something, job application, something like that, does, does it come up? Yeah. But I bring it up first thing because... There's no hiding it? No, not at all. Yeah. And I don't want to hide it. I mean, I made a stupid mistake, but now I'm paying for it. So I have to acknowledge it. Do you, do you still have an, an attraction to young young girls, or is it just the, the drugs kind of changed your... I was just looking for someone that night. I don't have an attraction to yeah. young girls right. or boys. What's the most painful part of all this for you? Not seeing my family in Ohio. And, of course, the money. I got a $6,500 bracelet, so. And how do you feel all this is, this experience has changed you? Sobered me up. Has it? Made me realize uh, life goes by pretty quick. What advice would you give to somebody else who's living a reckless life like you were? Uh, take a step back. Look at yourself. See if you're doing good or bad. Just try to get sober for a minute. Yeah. Then you can actually see yourself. And don't do something stupid. My stupid mistake ruined my life. Other people's stupid mistakes could take someone's life. Yeah. So at least I only hurt myself. All right, Ian. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, and good luck with uh, your, the rest of your life from here. You're, you're on the right path now, which is great. Yeah, just trying. Worst part is, is Laura told me to get me off of everything for $10,000, but I didn't have that. So I went with public pretender. Told me to do an open plea. He said, I'll probably just get probation. And the judge said, well, I'll just earn three years probation after three years DOC. And by the way, you're going to register the rest of your life. I'm like, oh, great. Thanks. Lawyer looked at me and said, sorry, bud. So if you get stuck in this situation, do your best to get the money to get a lawyer. Because sex offenders, any sex offense, whether it be victimless or whatever, uh, judges don't care. They don't like it. Unless you have a good lawyer. They can find all the rules. And this ruins your life for for how long? The rest of it. The rest of it? If I register the rest of my life. Is that right? Wow. And it determines where I live, where I work. Wow. Okay, Ian, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.